A critical part of doing any regression analysis is to examine the residuals. We already looked at the relationship between total fat and protein, and now the question is, uh, what do the residuals look like? Uh, and that is a question we can answer by getting graphs. So we are going to go to the stat regression window and then I can use fitted line plot or regression. Fitted line plot is a little easier so let's do that one. Now we said we were going to try and predict total fat from the amount of protein. So I stick all this back in here. Minitab is going to give me the same stuff I saw before but I'm now going to request some graphs for the residuals. You can have four separate graphs or you can just say give me four in the one plot which is easier because otherwise you got to deal with four separate graphs. Click OK. Another thing you might have to do and doesn't hurt because you're here, just will do it. Get Minitab to calculate for you the residuals and it will then calculate them and store them down in the spreadsheet. Click OK to this. Okay now first of all here's our line of best fit which we've already looked at and the residuals themselves which we're going to see here in a minute in the spreadsheet is the difference between a data point and a point that would fit exactly on that line and they are all measured in the vertical direction. Some of them are above the line so they'll have positive residuals. Some points are below the line so they will have negative residuals. Okay and then here's the plot of my residuals but I'm going to talk about that in a second. Let's just have a look right here now at the residuals and let's just briefly talk about how these residuals were calculated. All right, I have here my data. Minitab has calculated the residuals and stored them. So, all right, where does the 6.63 value come from? Well, here's what happens. We have a data, we have an actual food item. It actually contained 26 grams of protein and it actually contained 38 grams of fat. We want to take the 26 grams of protein plug that 26 value into our equation for the line of best fit right here and calculate total fat. So if I had the 26 times 0.95 plus the 6.65 I get a value of about 31.4. I think that's what it works out to be. So if I work that out it would be 31.4. Now 31.4 is what my predicted value is but my actual amount of fat in this food item is 38. So we take the 38 minus the 31.4 and what are you going to get? You're going to get approximately 6.6. .6. Because this residual is a positive value, it's telling me that my um, actual data point is above my predicted value. How much above? 6.63. Now here's another food item that also contained 26 grams of protein. Again you plug in the 26 into this equation you're going to get the same value of 31.4 but if I take 30 if I take the 20 which is the actual amount of fat minus the 31.4 this time I get a negative 11.4 approximately. So um, this time my um, actual data point is below what my predicted value is. Or another way to look at that is that my predicted value is higher than my actual value. Now Minitab does that for every single one of these protein values which are your X's, plugs it in, gets a predicted Y and subtracts that predicted Y from the actual Y's. That's what all these numbers represent. Now let's go and have a look at our residuals. Right here I have my residuals. Now in this course we're really only going to talk about these plots right here. These two and this one. Residuals versus order, we're kind of going to ignore that one. Okay, now one of the things about the residuals is that they are supposed to have a normal distribution. When I look at my histogram right here, the histogram looks reasonably unimodal and reasonably symmetric. It's not perfect, 
Uh, another thing I could do is have a look at the probability plot. Now if these residuals all followed a perfectly normal distribution, the blue dots would follow along this red line. I got a couple of low residuals right here and a couple of high ones that are kind of falling off the wagon. Note that this probability plot is not like a Ryan Joyner test. It doesn't actually give me a p-value, so this is a visual interpretation. I got a couple of outliers here, so these residuals may or may not really be normal. I could go check them, and I will show you how to do that. Now, the other thing that the, your notes talk about is the scatter of the residuals, and every residual gets plotted against its fitted value. Now, what does that mean? Let me just scratch this out of the way for a minute. This residual gets plotted against the value that I would get if I plugged 26 into this equation and solve for total fat. So the the value, sorry, the residual is 6.6. .6. That 6.6 .6 is going to get plotted against the 31.4 because that's what I get if I plug 26 in right here. Okay, where did my graph go again? Right here. Okay, so every residual gets plotted against its fitted value. When we look at this plot, <laughs> it takes a little bit of, of experience to know what to do with this plot. But what we really want to see is a random scatter of points. I basically want to see the same, and if I just ignore this guy right here, and this one, and these two down here, these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, these are my values that I'm seeing here. Anything that sticks out on this plot generally is going to stick out on this plot. If I were to ignore those four, generally speaking, and if I take a box right here, the spread of these residuals around this line right here is pretty much of a random scatter. The scatter from 0 to my hot to my positive points from 0 to my negative points in a vertical direction from here down to about here from here to about here that is approximately the same across this plot there's a few values right here where I'm not getting as much scatter right here overall we would say that the residuals are showing what's referred to as constant variance we need to have a constant variance across all of these fitted values your notes talk about um, the fact that you should not see any patterns and really this looks like a random scatter so this looks like our residuals have got this thing called constant variance and these two plots right here on the face of it suggest to me that my residuals look fairly normal. Now keep in mind that looking fairly normal and being fairly normal may not be the same thing. I got these outliers here. That could be a bit of an issue. If you're not sure about the normality issue, you've got your residuals stored in column C3. I could go stat basic statistics, do a normality test, check your residuals. So I've just picked it off from what was over here. And I can do the Anderson Darling test, which is the default, or you can do Ryan Joyner. Doesn't matter which one I do here. I'm going to click OK. Now, Anderson Darling test gives me a p value of 0.027. Remember that if your p value is less than 0.05, then the data are not normally distributed. And in this case, the p value is 0.027, which tells me that my residuals are not exactly normally distributed. Does that make a big difference in what I do with this regression? Not too much. And, you know, typically if you were doing a higher level of statistics, you would go in and you would see if you could take logs of different values and try and make these residuals a bit more normal. But we're not going to bother about that in this course.